Shalom. Good afternoon. L little little uh, misspeak uh, in the last video there. Um, you know, I just really been trying. I, I, you know, when I when I wanted to look at it personally to accept if my family was slaves, I I, I have to be honest. I had a, a, an emotional reaction. You know, I can see how it makes melanated people angry because honestly, in my gut, I had this feeling like, wow, I didn't. I didn't want to admit that my people were slaves, you know, nobody does. Um, and I think maybe that that's honestly part of what, what's been driving me to study. I want to make sense of it for myself. Um, and, you know, with that in mind, I think the Most High showed me something day before yesterday that kind of kind of put things into place. You know what I mean? When I was looking at it, I was like, hmm, okay. You know, it kind of, um, it kind of, for me right now, anyhow, um, kind of um, snapped everything together, you know. And then I went ahead and, and because I've been studying so many different, you know, there's so many different things in history, bro. There's fucking, man, it's confusing. You know, that's what I said. Like recently, man, it, 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 when I did the video about um, Emmanuel Klein, right, that he was a Hausa, former slave that bought all the land that they turned into Klein Town and, and Freetown and Sierra Leone, right? And so he's Hausa, which is supposed to be non-melanated, or at least partly non-melanated, um, or at least some different blood, you know, Asian blood and European blood, phenotypes, um, but... Um, Okay, so then, all right, so then I, I, I looked up his name, Klein, and saw that it, it was German origin. You know, it just kind of flips everything on his head now, because now that the name is German origin, doesn't that point more to the fact that, that he would be melanated? I don't know. You know, this stuff is very confusing. I was talking about the last time, bitter for sweet. It's like black for white. Everything's flipped on its head, and, and I will admit that I've had a hard time putting it together. But... um. You know, I put together the dates, man. When I found this thing that I'm going to show you in a minute, I wrote down it and it's on the it's on the card for the video. I don't know if you can read it or not, but um, I just made a little list for myself with the dates of uh, everything that went on in, in around this time in history just to see how it fits together. And um, so we got 1775 Dunmore's Proclamation, which was when the uh, English general Dunmore uh, and ge uh, not general, but um, governor of Virginia um, declared martial law in Virginia and, and uh, declared also that um, any slaves that wanted to fight for the side of the British um, could come and join him, right? And it was also what they used to explain um, the fact that there was melanated Britain, melanated people in Britain. Um, so one of the, the one of the strange things about that. So then he's uh, so then Dunmore is making his proclamation for for non-melanated people. You know what I mean? I just I'm just still learning too. You know. And so anyway, then 1776 is the War of Independence. And so that leads me to believe that those so-called loyalists were actually non-melanated people. Those loyalist slaves that fought on the part of the British would have been non-melanated. Okay, got 1788, Australia is, is colonized and found. Then we got 1800 and 1815 are the Barbary Wars, which we've been taught by Lex that that's when the English picked up a bunch of non-melanated slaves. And then we got 1833, Britain abolishes slavery. And then we got this event in 1848 that kind of fits everything together because it, we see here with the Sakwaliba um, that um, non-melanated slaves were being traded for a long time, the Slavs, you know, we've heard this, being traded by the, uh, the, the so-called Arabs. So anyway, Sakwaliba is a term used in medieval, medieval Arabic sources to refer to Slavs and other people of Central and Eastern Europe, or in a broad sense to European slaves. The term originates from Middle Greek Slavos, which is Hispano-Arabic. Strange. 
Um, let me just show you this too real quick because I put this in a video that was really long and I don't think anybody's seen it, man. But, you know, I just wanted to show this. Mestico in colonial Brazil was initially used to refer to mamalucos, persons born from a couple in which the blah, 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 other. It literally translates as mamaluk. Okay. And these mesticos are all over the world, man. That's that's when it gets really confusing. Is that they? I guess the conclusion or what I'm learning is that all of these, and I've seen it in different studies, that all of these ancient civilizations, like Britain, for example, was uh, uh, you know um, had had blacks there, had whites there, was a uh, uh, metro, you know, had a lot of different kinds of people. Um. And so I just stumbled on this, man. I, I'm sure you guys know all about this. I didn't know about this, okay? Revolutions of 1848, okay? And this story here, man, it goes on and on and on. And it's all just a, a wonderful story, you know, about how the, um, the serfs, the old uh, style of government, whatever they called that, with the with the, the king and the serfs and the, they claimed that in, in Europe in 1848, the people revert, revolted and overthrew the old system. And it was a glorious democratic revolution. You know, what a bunch of bullshit, man. You know what this is? This is white slaves overthrowing their fucking um, slave masters, their melanated slave masters. Um, and so, you know, it goes on and on about all the serfs and how, you know, the potato failure, the bourgeoisie, blah, blah, blah. Really nice story. And uh, I was just reading through it, man, and, and just seeing how 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 bullshit it is, you know, man. It's uh, it's tough to read when you're looking for the truth uh, because you got to read through so much horse shit, man. To, I try to even stay away from the baloney, but man, you know, sometimes the truth is in there. So that's why I got to kind of go through it. Um, anyway, just want to show you something real quick because it's interesting. Basically, all of Europe had a revolution in, in this year, in 1848. Um, France, I'm trying to get down to where it shows. Okay. So then we got Italy, right? 1848 revolution. France, 1848 revolution. Germany, 1848 revolution. Denmark, 1848 revolution. How is this possible that all these places had revolution the same year? That is fucking horse shit. Okay? That's white people overthrowing their slave masters. Schleswig. Um, Duchy of Schleswig. The Danes. 1848 revolution Habsburgs ruling in Austria, Spain, all over the place. 1848 revolution Hungary, 1848 revolution. How is this possible? Gallica, 1848 revolution. Look at that Ukrainian center of the Ukrainian national movement was in Gallica. Okay. So Gallica. And, you know, it's confusing again, because was it, uh, it, history is just so much to know, you know, earlier times, obviously, there, it was barbarian invasions in, in uh, Rome and stuff like that. But um, I don't know how they got from there to, anyway, I'm just learning, man, and just trying to, Sweden, Sweden had a revolution, 1848, Switzerland, Poland, Romania. Belgium. How's this possible? Ireland. Spain. So what, 10 different countries in Europe all had um, supposed democratic revolutions in the same year? That's totally impossible because, you know, just really trying to understand all this because um, 
you know, all these countries weren't even around once upon a time. So I think that, um, you know, the, 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 the whole story here, a whole fucking lie. I think part of the lie is that before that, you know, and, and they even admit to it, right, that they're overthrowing uh, the nobles, right? That's the story. The, the, the serfs overthrew the nobles. And now that we know that the nobles of Europe in that time were melanated people, that's actually a piece of the truth, right? The serfs or the slaves or the Slavs overthrew the noble blood. And um, with my personal story, the, the timeline is perfect, too, because 1848, you got this demo demon revolution in Europe. And uh, 1860, my people are, are my namesake. My great great grandfather is coming to uh, Puerto Rico in 1860. And you got this civil war in 1865. So. It, it fits in the timeline, most definitely. And uh, what it really made me think a lot about, too, is what I've been studying about the uh, the poor laws and the transportation acts of, of the people out of Britain, because uh, there's a lot of melanated people in, in a lot of the former British territories. Um, but then they were transporting a lot of non-melanated people, too, with these baby farms and with these workhouses. So... You know, that kind of threw another level of complexity into the whole studies. But um, what are you going to do, right? Just looking for the truth. So, um, you know, my mother's family, like I said in the last video, I did say it. I was kind of doing a little um, thought experiment. She's Irish. She's obviously um, <laughs> uh, Canaanite. And, um, and I love her, but... She is, has an adverse reaction to anything of the Most High, I feel. And, um, you know, she would have been a slave. Now, my, my namesake, my, my father's side, um, my so-called father's side, that came into Puerto Rico. And, you know, Puerto Rico, it claim, I, I did a little bit of study on it, claims that there is a different situation with slavery down in Puerto Rico, um, being that Spain was losing a... First of all, Puerto Rico is a Spanish territory and not a British territory, so it wouldn't have had anything to do with the melanated Britons. I don't know. I guess the Spain Spanish were melanated at that time. Um, but anyway, a different diff it claims that it went down differently in Puerto Rico, that they didn't use as many slaves because Spain was losing all their territories. They lost the territory in Venezuela. They lost their territory in... Uh, I forget. There was another major territory that they lost around that time. So that's when they started focusing on Puerto Rico and Cuba and trying to get um, non-melanated European Catholics to move there um, under the under the Spanish crown. Spanish crowns giving away land to European non-melanated Catholics, and that's how uh, Johan Fishhold landed up in. Puerto Rico in 1860. Um, so, you know, just glad to learn and uh, shallow one.